let us just move on to some coding and let us apply these two equations that is the original equation of fm which is this uh, a cos omega ct plus kf into at and uh, this equation for uh, approximated version of nbfm which is a cos omega ct minus kf into at into sin omega ct and let us see under this approximation whether they look exactly same or not and what happens when this approximation is violated so uh, let us go to Octave. Octave, as we already know, is uh, having a similar programming language as MATLAB. And uh, for this code, there are no changes. This code will run exactly same on both of uh, Octave and MATLAB. So first of all, let me run the code. And uh, we will understand code line by line later. But let me first take these two values. This is KF into MT. MT means the maximum value of message signal. So I have defined my message signal here. And you see that since it is a cosine signal, the maximum value has to be AM only. So AM is the maximum value. And uh, <coughs> let us take a value of 0 0.001. So this is 0 0.001 into KF's value is taken as 250. So ultimately KF into MT is going to be 0 0.001. 0.25. So 0.25 is fairly less than 1. Let's run the code and see the results first. So there are two plots that I have plotted. So first of all, let us see the result for time domain. In time domain, <coughs> if you have a look here, this is the actual FM signal. Actual FM signal, uh, we mean that for by the actual FM signal, we mean that we have got this equation phi FM A cos omega CT plus KF integration from minus infinite to T M alpha D alpha. And uh, <clears throat> the second equation is for NBFM, which is this one. Uh, the red equation that you see, the red curve that you see is corresponding to this NBFM's approximated version. And the blue equation that you see is corresponding to the actual FM's equation. So this is also uh, reflected in this. Blue is corresponding to FM and this is corresponding to NBFM approximation. So let me zoom it and see how closely they resemble. So there are two curves, uh, blue and this red one, and they are exactly overlapping as we see here. Let us zoom them and see. So again, they are appear to be the same if you further zoom them they appear to be the same and let's zoom them to an extent which is uh, very very deep so you can see here that they are separated if you zoom them sufficiently but this separation as you can see the order is very very less so practically they overlap with each other right so this is for the value of kf into mt which is 0.25 and you see the magnitude spectrum of the blue signal which happens to be the actual FM signal it has the carrier frequency at 100 100 I have taken the carrier frequency of 100 and message frequency of 20 so the phase spectrum is this and in this NBFM approximated version also since both of the signals were exactly overlapping so you, we had the magnitude and phase spectrum same for both of the signals now let's uh, change the value to 0 0.01 the maximum value of your massive signal let's change to 0 0.01 and in this case your value of kf into mt will be 2.5 right kf into mt product will become 2.5 which is larger than one right but it's not very large as compared to one so let me just run this code and see the results in time and frequency domain both so first we will see the results for time domain again in time domain if you see there is no problem like both of the signals they perfectly overlap and uh, you know Although the value is greater than, K, uh, you know, KF into MT is greater than 1, but still they seem to overlap. But now the point of difference here will be, if you zoom it sufficiently, uh, we were able to distinguish between red and blue signal in the previous case. Here that uh, zooming is not that much, means you will get this separation very early as compared to the previous case. So you can see that the difference here is not practically zero, it has got some value. Right. Similarly, if you see this thing in frequency domain, in frequency domain, again, there is not much difference, right? Although the value is greater than one. So this KF into MT should be very, very less than one. Is uh, This one is not a perfect precise boundary where NBFM will change to WBFM suddenly, right? So uh, this is just a boundary and above that boundary also for some time, this remains um, NBFM it means it can be thought of as NBFM only or WBFM but then for this particular case since the signals overlap so it is NBFM now let me just change the value of KF into MTS 25 now this is large as compared to one so let's see what the results look like 
in time and frequency domain so let's look at time domain first in time domain now if you will zoom it let me zoom some portion you can see that uh, the difference is again very clearly visible between these two signals and now if you notice this scale this is practically uh, you know more as compared to the previous case and in the frequency domain if you will see uh, the signal again in frequency domain these sidebands have started to appear right so for up, uh, as of now also the spectrum looks similar but these bands have started to appear why because in the time domain uh, these blue and red signal they were deviating with respect to each other and that is why the frequency of the message signal has also started to appear in both of the cases right now this effect will be clearly understood when we further increase this value let's make kf into mt as that is kf into am in this case as 250 now 250 is very large value and this case is very interesting if you will zoom, uh, if you will just um, run this code and see the representation in time and frequency domain now the difference is very clear now let me just zoom this first of all so that you can see the difference so i'm zooming it here and you can see that this red signal is an amplitude modulated signal and the blue signal blue signal is the frequency modulated signal so blue signal is ahead of this red signal in this case and you can see that blue signal is below this red signal in this particular case so this blue signal uh, is you know sometimes having a frequency larger as compared to the red and sometimes a frequency deviation which is uh, smaller as compared to this red signal so that is why this blue signal is frequency modulated otherwise if you see the gap between these red uh, sinusoid curves it remains constant however this blue signal it goes left and right of this red signal so now let me again bring it to the original scale and let's also see that in this particular case this red signal is amplitude modulated so it has got two frequencies one is the frequency of carrier and other is the frequency of the message signal so as we see in this particular equation one is the frequency for this particular carrier cos omega ct and another is the frequency for this message signal which i have taken as 20 and for carrier i have taken it as 100 however for the frequency modulated signal as you see now in this blue signal it has got no amplitude variations because ultimately it will not tamper with the amplitude it's frequency modulation and nbfm's approximation to this frequency modulation when kf into mt is very very less than one uh, is amplitude modulated but since kf was very less there if this value of kf is very less then you see the effect of at will also be reduced and that is why the change in amplitude was not very visible when we took the value of kf as very less right however if the value of kf is sufficiently increased and then and, uh, in that case you can see the effect of change in amplitude is also seen in time domain and if you go to frequency domain you see here that <coughs> instead of having one spike corresponding to carrier at 100 we have got two other spikes at a distance of 20 on both the sides why because we have message and now uh, message also and carrier also and now the message is also significant so if you zoom it further you can see on the negative side there will be three frequencies one is minus 100 another is minus 120 another is minus 80 or on the positive side if you will see you will have the frequencies at you know 100 and then 20 here and there right so this is your <coughs> spectrum for nbfm in your frequency domain but here if you see for fm in this frequency domain instead of having only two frequencies the higher order terms have also become significant so there are more terms but we know that this spectrum might not depict the uh, reality because uh, here you have uh, you, the linearity is not valid and that is why we have to do this power series analysis so interpreting this spectrum is little bit difficult right so now uh, to see that whether these two additionally introduced sidebands here correspond to carrier or not let us increase the power of this carrier signal by you know an amount of 10 so that those sidebands should increase as compared to carrier so on increasing that you can see here that uh, in frequency domain now the carrier is small for nbfm approximation and these sidebands corresponding to message has become large so this confirms that these two additional sideband which appear when the approximation is validated they correspond to message and since nbfm approximation only contains the first 
uh, two terms in the series that is why the spectrum is limited it is uh, as good as the spectrum of an amplitude modulated signal right so there is carrier and there are these signals however as we have increased uh, this kf into empty value this is spectrum for the actual fm has spread out on the entire uh, region of frequency so it's a combination of various uh, sync functions and that we have already discussed so this is how the spectrum should look like and now you know what is the meaning of these two uh, spikes that appear when this approximation is violated and what is nbfm so the important point that we will discuss in future is the important point is again let me take it as one and uh, <clears throat> let's see the time domain representation so in time domain representation if you look at this signal these signals are exactly the same if you only consider the zones which are common to both right if you see the frequency modulated signal it does not goes up to the full extent as this amplitude modulated signal is and it closely matches with these red lines wherever it is existing for this particular boundary right so uh, this is a frequency modulated signal and the red one is your amplitude modulated signal and later we will see that by using nbfm we can generate wbfm that is wide band frequency modulation as in this case now this blue signal actually corresponds to wfm why because this kf into mt assumption is now violated so <coughs> we can construct we can synthesize this uh, WBFM by using this NBFM only. So <laughs> the equation of NBFM is already there, and we have seen that it will have some amplitude modulation if KF into MT is, uh, you know, <clears throat> not less than one. It is very very greater than one. So by using the approximated equation where we have neglected all the infinite terms and kept only two, we can first construct this red signal, and then we can apply a band pass limiter. which will just clip off this signal and bring it this signal in this form so from there we can actually generate the wbfm signal also and to generate this red signal only a dsb sc modulator or dsb fc modulator will be required because ultimately this is a amplitude modulated signal so the generation process of wbfm also comes from nbfm only so we will see that in the coming videos on wbfm etc so uh, this is it for today's video okay let me also explain the code so <coughs> this is the code for frequency modulation we will be plotting actual versus nbfm's approximated equation right now uh, first of all the sampling theorem is applied since we are using a carrier of frequency uh, 100 so i have taken the sampling frequency to be 1000 and the time uh, the gap between two samples in time domain is taken as t is equal to 1 over fs and the length of the signal that i am using is uh, 500 and the time axis is constructed in this way minus of l by 2 till l by 2 into t means you will be having a array which starts from say uh, minus 100 and it and it goes to 100 with a gap of capital t seconds and this floor function is you already know why it is used because l by 2 could be a fraction so just to make it an integer we have used this floor function similarly really the frequency axis is defined instead of t the gap between two consecutive samples has to be fs by l so this is we already know from the sampling theorem now after this we have constructed our message signal now message signal is this am is the maximum amplitude so it is defined here fm is 20 so frequency is 20 hertz and i am defining kf also here for the purposes of modulation as 250 so that we can change this kf into mt or kf into am here itself so kf is taken as 250 usually for frequency modulation kf has a high value so it's not a good idea to change kf's value we can change this value of am right and then we have defined the carrier signal which has a frequency of 100 and its amplitude is 1 and uh, uh, this amplitude of carrier signal hardly matters here it will matter when we will discuss this interference between co channels in frequency modulation so there we will see that amplitude of carrier also plays a role then we have implemented these equations for frequency modulated version of the signal and nbfm approximated signal you can just look at this slide and see those two equations here this is the first equation and this one is the second equation so we have implemented it here fm and nbfm approximation 
and uh, this uh, cumulative trapezoidal function is used for integrating this and this capital T is multiplied before that before cumulative trapezoidal integration function will integrate whatever is written inside it assuming that the gap between two consecutive samples in time domain is one unit however in our case it is capital T unit so it is the requirement of this command that if you want to select the gap as uh, T units then you have to multiply that before this rest everything is uh, very very evident from the equation itself so you can see the equation and see uh, this implementation so after performing this frequency modulation now to bring it into the frequency domain for frequency domain plot you have used the command FFT and both of the signals FM signal and NBFM approximated signal are brought into frequency domain and FFT shift we already know it is used for plotting the spectrum correctly uh, means if you want to plot a double sided spectrum then you have to use this particular thing so it will shift your spectrum appropriately for proper display and this plotting logic I am not discussing this plotting logic uh, we already know these basic plot commands so you can see it for yourself and this if you are seeing this video on YouTube this code will be available below the link of uh, below my video in the form of link so you can just play with these parameters you can just play with this kf into am and replicate the results that i have just illustrated so this is it for today's video in today's video we have just learned uh, what is narrow band frequency modulation and what is the effect of carrying forward or violating this particular assumption so thank you very much